I'm Ashley. And I'm Jackie. Welcome back to Dumb Witch Club. Welcome back. <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a little while. It's been a minute. Yeah, it's been a minute. We yeah. were literally just saying we forgot how to do this. Yeah, we forgot what we were doing and who we are and I what know. we do and how and I know. For so why. we were supposed to have a week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ended up being two weeks. Yeah. Due to illness and unforeseen suches. You know how that so, goes. Yeah. So whatever. Whatever. We're back. Happy New Year, bitches. I mean, witches. That's right. And yeah. I can't believe that we're (laughs) here, but that's cool. 2024. 2024. But dying. Oh my goodness. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. It's okay. We don't have to know everything. It's just the first week. Nobody asked you anything. No. Nobody better ask anybody (laughs) anything. And if they do, just be like... New Year, new me, not really sure. Yeah. We're going to do a card poll. (laughs) If if that wasn't clear in my mind. (laughs) Playing off these cards. Um, What deck do we have here? This is the Chakoli Oracle. She's the artist. So pretty. And it's beautiful, beautiful art. Nicoletta Chakoli. Yes. It's gorgeous. Yes. Very dreamy. Yeah, it's sort of like fairy tale reference yeah. adjacent, you know. There's like sort of princess queen kind of king looking. There's like a lot of like animals and fruits and things, mm-hmm. you know, symbolic things. It's very like Alice in Wonderland. It has an Alice in Wonderland kind of vibey. So yeah, yeah, it's really, her art's really beautiful. And what do we need to know right now? What do we need to know right now? Oh, I knew you were going to pick that one. So these cards also don't have words. They only have pictures and they are numbered. So this is card number 21 and it's like two girls. They're mm-hmm. identical. They have blonde, little short hair, pink dresses. They're holding hands and there's one heart, like an anatomical heart in mm-hmm. between them. And it's connected to both of them. I love it. It's so pretty. I love it, too. Do you want me to look up what it says? You can look up and read what it says. I mean, I think, you know, the intention is clear even without words, you know? We've drawn this card. Have we? Yeah, because right when I read Con Sanguinuity, I'm like, I yeah, we've we've drawn Mm. this. Yeah, I kind of had a feeling... But tell me what it says. Some, and I remember the words. Some people feel like family, whether they share our blood or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So it's about like chosen family and family and love. Yes. Right? Yes. And being really connected to somebody. Well, that's how I've been. That's how we've been feeling. That's what we've been doing. (sighs) That is definitely 100% true. And, you know, I'm just reminded once again that like, Sometimes you just pull the card that tells you what you already know, and Mm -hmm. it's perfect. Mm -hmm. That's definitely been the theme of the latter part of this year and going into this new year, so that's really nice. Definitely. And I really like it, and we'll say a little more about this in our witching hour. Oh, yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. January energy report, which is not what we're doing right now. No. But not. tune in to that as well if you haven't already. So we'll That's say a little right. bit more about tying in th- that card into the month of January and kind of the overall themes and energy of January. Totally. So, Love that. But relating to that as well. Uh huh. Why though? Why though? Why though? I don't know. I mean, we kind of mm. know a little bit. No, I mean, on our little hiatus, you know, we missed a few things. We did. But also, not that many things happened. It was a quiet, quiet week, the first week of January. Mm-hmm. It um, was. <coughs> which is good. Yes. Needed. Much needed. So, yes. what do we have on the horizon? Well, as you were watching and listening to this, hopefully watching, maybe listening to this, um, Mars has entered Capricorn. hmm And so, and I think we kind of teased this um, on one of the episodes before our little hiatus 
Um, and that we were like, well, that means business and, you know, Capricorn gets down to business. But at the time Mm -hmm. we were drawing cards about partying and Uh witchy revelry. (laughs) So we didn't care about it then. That's true. And we're like, we're going to put that off until then. And guess what? Now it's now. Now it's here. And here is here. And And now is here. And now is here. And so it's here. However. Yeah. Just because that's happening doesn't mean you have to have it all figured out doesn't mean that it just means you know we're starting we're opening the page yeah and again we'll talk more about mars in capricorn and mars's journey through capricorn um but i just want to say yeah it's a very interesting journey yeah. that mars yeah. is going to have for oh, yeah. capricorn this oh, yeah. month um from january 4th until february 13th yeah. so you know joining mars uh-huh. in his little romp through capricorn oh, right. is our good friend <laughs> Mercury. Oh, our good friend, huh? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, keep your friends. Bingo. What is it? Keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. Correct. Yeah. Yes. So that's Bingo. where Mercury is falling into. So Mercury uh, finally turned direct on January 1st. Yes. So we are now dealing with Mercury direct in Sagittarius because Mercury went into Capricorn in December, went into retrograde, went back into Sagittarius, has been in that retrograde Sag space. Yeah now has come into direct, still in Sagittarius, Mm -hmm. and then will enter Capricorn on January 13th. Mm -hmm. So what does all of this mean, fine, friendly folks? Um, You know, I just think it means things have been a little mixed up, a little convoluted. There has been revelry. Sagittarius came in like, hello, you know, the holidays are still going. Like, let's, you know, tell everybody everything that you want and just, you know, (laughs) keep, you know, whatever. Um, but in retrograde, it's always a little convoluted, always a little wacky. Oh, yeah. But now going direct again. Yes. Smooth sailing, but I'm we're happy. still in Sagittarius. So, yeah. We're living it up. We're living the most life. We're having adventures. We're feeling adventurous. Maybe mm-hmm. we're setting intentions for the new year. It really lends itself well to that. It does. I do like that. And then part. going into Capricorn in a couple of, you know, a week or so, or within this week. Right. Then it's time to get down to business. Yeah. Which is great because it's like putting the things that you thought about in that adventurous side or adventurous time into motion and actually like, you know, making it come to fruition. So it's a good thing. It's not like a a downer energy. It's not like, okay, that's over now. It's not like that. It's like, Mm -hmm. okay, every, all the dreams and sort of adventures and things you thought about when it was in Sagittarius. Okay. Mm -hmm. Capricorn's like, this is how you have to pay for them. Yes. So what exactly. Are you do? Let's get like, to work. Okay. You're like, all right. And you're like, okay, but it's necessary. Yeah. You need it. And also, yeah, I'm I'm ready for the Mercury and Sagittarius to be done. Yeah. People are whiling out with their mouths. It happens, you know. I'm like, ever you, talk to oh. an actual Sagittarius? I'm like, oh, you're saying that to me? <laughs> oh. Yeah. Interesting that you uh that you think that that's the way that I choose to be spoken to. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. Love well, that for you. But also the Mercury in Sagittarius is going to help you say that right back oh. to them. Oh, so. yeah. And I will. Yeah. And have. <laughs> so, yeah. We've been, we've been doing that. So I'm ready to, you know, maybe just move past that a little bit. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Um, what else? You got something about the moon. I thought about the moon. I mean, when do I have things about the moon? Every time? Every time. Um, every single time? <laughs> yes. January 11th, new moon in Capricorn. So Yay. Love a new moon. We love a new moon. Um... Especially a new moon in Capricorn. It's beautiful placement. It's it just fits mm-hmm. so well with that seed planting quality. Yes, right? definitely. Yes, because mm-hmm. yeah, Capricorn really is about like planning, planning, and getting to work yes. and being determined and yes. setting those intentions mm-hmm. and being like, yes, I'm at the bottom of this mountain, but I am a mountain goat and I am climbing to the top. That's right. Just try to stop me. Just watch me. Yeah. Yeah. So I love it. There's, there's opportunity to start creating some of that structure. Um, and I think a lot of whatever placements you have, I think a lot of us can benefit from some of that structure right now. Definitely. Um, Especially after the sort of revelry of the holidays. Yes. It's comforting. Structure is comforting, right? Anything you read, you know, structure is comforting. So that's happening. So I think it's a good time to, um, start, Feeling into the energy you really want to bring about for yourself, Mm -hmm. you know, in this new year and start kind of adopting those small shifts. I've been seeing a a trend on social media that's like the ins and outs. Have you seen that? Mm -mm. Yeah. So people are making these live. Eventually you'll see it. People are making these lists where they're like, 
um, what's out for 2024 and what's oh. in for 2024. Oh, okay. So, okay. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah I this guess so. new moon in Capricorn feels like an ins and outs list kind of activity. Not that you mm. actually have to make that, but if you feel drawn to, you totally can. Capricorns love writing. Oh, yeah. Like writing things down. And writing things down, that's how you make things reality. Absolutely. And that's that how you process things and yes. how you manifest things. Totally. So, we've, yeah. we've, we've discussed that. So it might be nice to maybe make a little ins and outs. You don't have to share it on social media if you don't want to. You don't even have to do it in that structure. But it felt a little bit like that energy to me when I was seeing those things. So No, I totally agree. And also 111 is like an angel number day. Yeah, it's like it. a power number day. It's a great day. So, yeah. So just, you know good this is good stuff this is a good why though it is a good why though i like it i like it too yay i onward. like it too onward and upward onward that's and why upward. though mm-hmm. what is this whole episode about <gasps> we have some big witch energy for a big witch topic we do all about your witchy wedding your witchy wedding you have to say it like that all like dreamy right witchy wedding witchy wedding so i think this came about because well you know sort of like a lot of like, maybe it's corny and maybe it's stereotypical, but it's, like, around the holidays, people yeah. get engaged a lot. They do. Right? They do. Um, and so then it's, like, people get married in the summer. That's sort of, like, the traditional kind of, yeah. you know. But I love it as a witch, like, working with the seasons in some fashion and yeah. just kind of realizing, like, you know, however you choose to do it, traditional or not, and we're going to talk about that. Yeah. You know, a wedding can be a really special and important part of your witchy practice and also just your life events if you choose to have that Mm -hmm. and yeah and it can look any kind of way you want but you know we're going to give you some ideas and talk about how you can um make it really your own and witchify yeah witchify it so I mean I think the thing that's funny just to like dive into this really you know like kind of hard and fast is it's similar in my mind to like Christmas okay that Every single tradition I know just works around <laughs> Christmas. It's like, real. Okay, Christmas is a real thing. <laughs> Every single Christmas tradition uh-huh, yeah. is actually a pagan tradition. 100%. And that's very true with weddings. Yep. So everything that you might traditionally see in a Christian church wedding yep. has a tie back to pagan ritual yeah. where people were joined together in marriage. Yes. So... It's not like you're doing some different thing. Yeah. It's all the same stuff. Yes. I love that you said that. I didn't even think about saying that caveat, but I love that you did because, yes, any kind of search you're going to do, and if you're about to be a witchy bride, likely you've done this already and come across Everything is sort of like the language around it is like that, right? Like, mm-hmm. oh, you're like offbeat alternative, <laughs> weird bride. Like, yes, you're like, exactly. I'm just not weird. Like, yeah. I'm actually just, yes. this is very like normal yeah. and real and traditional and kind of the way they did things, except now it's not seen that way. So, yes, yes it's all the same. It's all the same. And you can do some of it, none of it, some of these things, some of those things. I mean, most people do like, kind of just an amalgamation of different things that they choose that are meaningful. So you're Mm -hmm. not doing anything that's like strange at all. At all. I also think, you know, like we've talked about in other contexts, depending on how out you are as a witch or how acceptable these practices are in your family or your friend group. I mean, you can have a full on witch wedding where everyone there is like, oh shit, I'm at a witch wedding. (laughs) Or... You could do little things and nobody would even notice. Yeah. Except for you and the people that you choose to share that with. Absolutely. Yeah. So don't be scared. Don't be scared. No, (laughs) don't be scared. It's all going to be like beautiful and amazing and you're going to be beautiful and amazing. I think so for me, one of the most important factors in kind of making or contributing to a witchy wedding feel Uh is the location. Yeah. So obviously like your traditional like religious church or synagogue setting, if that's what you're using, you can still incorporate different things. Totally. But if you can have a location that is outdoors, that is in nature in some fashion, Mm -hmm. I think it just really lends itself to connecting with the elements, connecting with the earth, connecting with the season that you're having your wedding wedding in, um, which right there is kind of the heart of witchcraft practice. Totally. I completely agree. And it's, you know, you, you got to know yourself. So if, 
you know, doing it outdoors, that's a risk. And depending on where you are. Yeah, the weather the cannot weather, the time cooperate you, with you. Yeah. Yeah. How, you know, depends on how, like, open you are to those things. But certainly if you can do that, amazing. Mm-hmm. Just amazing. Yeah. Definitely. Great so place. for me, that was kind of one of the main ways that even doing that, um, it's one of those things where nobody has to realize that that has a connection to witchcraft. Exactly. You know, yeah, a lot of people get married outdoors yeah. without a connection to witchcraft. Super so. common. Absolutely. And it just, like you said, even just that piece in and of itself, even if everything else yes. was just sort of traditional or standard, that differentiates it and just gives it a whole different feel and the connection that you're going to feel on that day. It's just all going to feel different. Yeah, so. definitely. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Okay. What else? Um, So I think symbolism is a really important thing and an amazing thing and also something where like other people really wouldn't have to know, Mm -hmm. um, you know, what symbolically is important to you isn't always super obvious. Um, but like looking at the date that you want to choose mm. for any of the events or the actual wedding event, yes. um, looking at your own numerology or your partner's numerology, yes. um, or just of the year, or the theme that you're going for. There's all kinds of different ways you can sort of approach that. Um, I also realize, and you also realize sometimes you don't have a lot of choice with that. Right. Um, you may not like, you may have a specific day and that day is not available. Yeah. And so it also, I think sometimes it's both things. You can really dictate what you want, but sometimes the right thing sort of happens to you. Mm. And I think looking at things like that as an opportunity to, say to see it as okay well this is actually what it's probably meant to be and then doing the reverse sort of looking into Mm -hmm. why it's going to be on that date and what that even if it's not something you outright chose or you couldn't choose I think you're so right about that I know you were talking about like the numerology and the numbers and that also includes you can cast a chart for a date and a time Um, You can do that, like, maybe with options that you're considering to kind of see, you know, what different rising signs come up, what different moon signs come up. Or, like you said, if you're kind of in a space where, like, this is the day that's going to work and this is the time that the venue says you can have it, you can still cast a chart for that and you can look through that and you can comb through that and Mm -hmm. you can see, like, what is included in that and kind of maybe get the sense that that's what's meant for your marriage, um, right. including like maybe what the strengths and weaknesses are revealed mm-hmm. in that chart mm-hmm. and kind of take that into your partnership, knowing mm-hmm. that that might be, you know, part of what you experience. Definitely. Yeah. It can all have some symbolic meaning to it. It all has some symbolic meaning to it. And again, like something you would know and maybe go super deep into, or maybe it's not even really that deep. It's just like numbers that you know, are meaningful to you or give you power. Yeah, just numbers that you like, you know. I mean, I think a lot of people get married on, like, Valentine's Day Mm -hmm. just because it's Valentine's Day and it's, like, romantic and it's sweet, you know, and something like that, you know. Totally. So it could be anything. Or, like, Halloween's a popular day to get married, too. Totally. Yeah. And I like like that. I like kind of taking traditional holidays and some of, like, the minor holidays (laughs) and, like, making that about you. That's amazing because what else are you going to do? That's, like, the totally. way to make it so personal for you. That's incredible. And no one else no. cares. That's, you know, the most important thing to you. So I think that's cool. Yeah, no, that's true. And then, yeah, speaking also of symbols, like, the traditional things that we see in a lot of weddings mm-hmm. also have symbolism in witchcraft, like yes. um, exchanging rings yep. and making vows and speaking words out loud. Like, mm-hmm. we've talked about so many times with, like, spells and manifestations. Um, Absolutely. You know, having those ritual elements, which is really what they are. Yeah. You're speaking something into truth and you're having folks witness that. Yeah. Adding power to that. Like all of that is a ritual. It is. All of those elements of the ceremony. Everybody's having a witchy wedding. They just don't know they are. <laughs> Literally. There's no such Everybody. thing as a not witchy wedding. There isn't. If you really extrapolate it out and explain it the way that you just mm-hmm. did everyone's doing it they just they maybe wouldn't talk about it that way or categorize it that way but and yeah. that's fine like you're wearing specific clothing for this purpose yes um you have other people standing with you kind of forming a circle of some yes. kind yes 
Also wearing specific clothing. Yes. Um, people carry flowers. I mean, yep. that has like various historical tie-ins, but totally. You know, it's very it's very pagan. It is. <laughs> it is. It's funny that people kind of don't realize that. Yeah. If they don't. I'm like, oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. It's yes. cool. No, for sure. It's for sure. Cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I also think if you want to be a little more intentional or specific about that, yeah. you absolutely can. Um, yes. Do you have ideas for mm-hmm. how to do that? Yes. I'm say, sure say, you do as well. I do too, but you say a little. Um, so obviously an altar. Yes. And I don't mean the altar that you stand in front of or sort of stand, you know, they call that like a a wedding altar. Right. But what I'm referring to is a, um, like a witchcraft altar. It can be small, it can be large, it can be anything you want, but sort of, um, maybe similar to what you might have in your home. You can have a wedding specific altar. Yes. Um, it can be publicly displayed in your space for people to see and kind of experience. It could also be something that you do privately, um, in a space that is not open to your guests to see. I think either way is super meaningful and nice, but including objects that are important. Mm -hmm. If you are into crystals, that would be great to have, um, whatever ingredients sort of are meaningful to you or meaningful for the day. Mm -hmm. Um, I also think having pictures of loved ones, Mm -hmm. um, and I've, seen people do pictures of loved ones who have passed yes as part of their altar um I've seen that done kind of separately as well but um I think having as part of everything that you're doing sort of magically for the day and communing with your spirit guides I think that's amazing to do Mm -hmm. um and it can be decor as well if you want it to be Exactly. I think it's amazing as decor. I think it's amazing as decor too. And I love that you said that this can be sort of public as in it's up there Mm -hmm. on display, like wherever the couple is going to be standing. Sure. But you could also do this privately, like Mm -hmm. in a room before and have it set up there um, and and not bring it out into the public space. Mm -hmm. Um, I think also adjacent to that, and if you have that altar in public especially, Mm -hmm. um, you can have your efficient open your ceremony with um bells or chimes or with casting a circle with salt Mm -hmm. or and this could be done somewhat silently you don't even you don't have to make a big sermon out of it and involve everybody in it necessarily no it's just that you're the officiant is performing that in front of everyone Mm -hmm. to kind of really set the intention for the ceremony and bring that spiritual witchcraft to it. Yeah. I love that. I really love that. And yeah, certainly you can do it yourself if you feel like that's really important to you, but yes, oftentimes there's a lot kind of going on. And I think if you, um, hopefully you've chosen someone to officiate your ceremony that you have a lot of trust in, um, with, you know, these ideas and who understand you really well. And so I think that's a beautiful thing to do. And it, it really just indicates kind of like the commencement of Mm -hmm. this, that it's special and it's sacred and it is a ceremony. Mm -hmm. Every ceremony has an element of that. So (laughs) yes, exactly. And I think the other thing that's cool, and I will definitely mention this right now is, you know, if you're having sort of uh, you know, the traditional not witchy wedding. Right. Um, maybe you find a venue and maybe it comes with an efficient and right. that's just, that's done. You know, mm-hmm. that's done. Um, a lot of people in general are having family or friends perform their ceremony. Yes. Because you can go online. It's pretty simple mm-hmm. and you can become ordained mm-hmm. to perform ceremonies. Yes. So if you know someone who will do that for you, you can have a full on any kind of spiritual or religious ceremony or non-religious ceremony that is very, very personal to you. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to go and find somebody who's somehow, um, you know, a high priestess in a Wiccan church to do your wedding, unless you're a member of a Wiccan church group, and then you do that if you know those people. But if you don't, you can still have whatever you want to have yeah. um, if you have someone who's willing to step up with you and kind of go through the process of creating that ceremony mm-hmm. with you. Yeah, and I think more and more people are going in that direction. Yeah, just in general. Mm-hmm. And I love to see it because, you know, that, yeah, your connection with the divine is, it doesn't need a conduit, you know. Your your connection with the divine is your connection with the divine. And it, that's just like... I love how you said that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I love that more people are kind of recognizing that and taking ownership of that because, 
you you don't need anybody to do that for you. Mm-mm. No, but it's also really hard to just perform your own wedding. It is hard by yourself with your partner. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it can be done. It can be done. obviously. It can be done. It can be done. Um, and depending on like whatever's legal in your state, sure. if you have to have witnesses, you know, these types of things. Yes. If you're conducting a legal ceremony in addition to a spiritual ceremony. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you should make sure that you understand those laws if that's what you're doing. But yeah, if you're not or whatever, then you can do whatever you want to do, which is really nice. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, what can we say about like colors and such yes I love this um yeah colors are super important it's just part of the the symbology thing too right it's all Mm -hmm. kind of part of that um incorporating colors there's a couple different ways I think you can approach it there's colors that are sort of your power colors Mm -hmm. the colors that contribute to or make up your aura or your partner's aura yes um or if you've done maybe I've never done this or thought about this but I think it could be cool like an aura study of the two of you like a color study of I love that idea and the blend of those two I think that would be pretty cool um or you can go with this season Mm -hmm. because I feel like that's witchy in and of itself to really kind of blend with the natural surroundings and go with you know what the season sort of brings forward Mm -hmm. and that is a very common thing that's done in traditional weddings right typically that's how people decide what season they're even going to do their wedding in because it matches with sort of the aesthetic that they wanted in the first place yes a hundred percent and I I love that aura idea I've also never thought of that or like heard of it I'm sure People have done that already too. Just, yeah, that's really, really cool. Um, I also like the idea that, you know, again, weddings just in general are becoming more personal and eclectic, yes. I would say, mm-hmm. where, you know, we're not really assigning like, here's this one kind of like hideously awkward dress <laughs> that everyone has to wear. Right. If you even have attendance. Sure. Um, you know, which you obviously don't have to do. And a lot of people aren't having any more either. Right. But just being able to have like, you know, a color scheme where it can be creative and mm-hmm. it can be personal for the people who are with you as yes. well, you know? And mm-hmm. I think that is, I don't know, somehow I feel like that's witchy, you know, it to is. let people express themselves while they're there with you. Totally. I love that. I love to see it. I love a mismatch moment or sort of, you know, like in the same yeah. color family, but different. I mean, yeah, it doesn't match, but it goes. Yes. I love that. I love that too. Mm-hmm. And you can tell that it's meaningful to them. Like there's just something about it. Like even if it's not some color that you're specifically drawn to, you can tell if that means something to somebody else. Like you can yes. feel the intention behind that. Well, cause people, they're going to like glow and be yes. comfortable in their own own skin yes, you know absolutely. that way mm-hmm. so and I know look if we're talking about a bride you know we're gender females you know yes. we're brides if we were getting married yeah like it's about the bride it's about the couple but if you want people participating with you yeah. it's about all of you yeah. and creating like this bond with the couple but also the community and the family, whether it's chosen family or whatever it is. Yeah, I know. So I think just remembering that too, you know? Absolutely. And I feel like more and more people are doing that nowadays too. Mm-hmm. Where, it, you know, it used to be just very, fo- I mean, like Bridezilla was like one of like the top shows and like, you know, that well. was kind of, and I mean, that was an extreme thing, but that was kind of the mentality though, mm-hmm. you know, at the time was like, it's your day and it's, it's all, all about, about you. Yeah. yeah. It's not, I don't, I have not attended anything in that vein in a very, very long time. Yeah. It does not feel like that's the kind of the culture around it anymore. Everything I've attended has been just so collaborative and so beautiful in that way. And I love to see it. Yeah, it's so much better. Um, I think we also want to be careful about not appropriating traditions that are part of other cultures. Mm -hmm. In our attempt to do something, um, you know, pagan or sure. with witchcraft, because there's a lot of traditions that are pagan or mm-hmm. have roots in different kinds of witchcraft or whatever mm-hmm. in different cultures. So we want to be careful not to take those unless mm-hmm. we belong to them. Absolutely. So something like that might be like a broom jumping. Right. Um, 
mm-hmm. or even like a hand clasping. I think that's mm-hmm. become popular um, in witchcraft yeah. um, type ceremonies. And there isn't inherently anything wrong with doing it either. I think you just have to acknowledge mm-hmm. if you aren't part of the culture that that comes from, you mm-hmm. have to acknowledge where it does come from. Yeah, absolutely. And where you know why you're using it yeah definitely I had the I had um hand fasting written down because it again that's going to be something if you're researching um pagan or witchy weddings it's going to be something that you see pop up a lot Mm -hmm. and I think the reason for the increased popularity of it is game of thrones that's probably true yeah which yeah a little unfortunate just because I mean information is great right and and it's it's wonderful to keep things alive but also when it muddies the origins of things it that makes it a little difficult and then I also think that there is um sometimes pressure around that might be like the only thing that you see right right that is a Mm. ceremonial thing like that to do Mm -hmm. and so people feel the pressure like oh well you know, maybe they don't feel super comfortable with something that's really religious, like a candle ceremony or something. So hand fasting is brought up a bunch and it's like, okay, well, I'll just do that. That's really never a reason to pick something just because you see a proliferation of it and you're just doing that. I mean, knowing the history behind that is super important. It happens to be culturally significant to me. So it, you know, it is. Um, but yes, understanding that and where it comes from and how ancient it is and special it is is really important to know. So if you don't want to appropriate, uh-huh. you can use your little creative witchy brain and consult with your witchy friends. Yeah. And you can come up with things that you just invent for yourself. Uh-huh. I think a common one, which isn't that you're inventing it if it's common, but is like sort of the candle lighting. Oh, yeah. You know, and that's used in lots of lots of ceremonies. Yeah. But I think you can make it a little, you can put a little witchy twist on it with the colors of the candles, with what is said yeah. as you're doing the candle. And what I mean by that is both members of the couple um, light a candle and then together they light a third candle right. and then that becomes like the symbol for mm-hmm. their, you know, union or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I think that's really usable. It and is. It, it, to my knowledge, that doesn't belong to any particular no. cultural tradition. Um, but I think there's lots of things you could come up with. You could like create a spell jar together with your partner. It's a great idea. Um, while you're up, you know, in front. Um, you can, like, name things as, you know, symbols as you're dropping them in. You can, like, put things into a box, like a keepsake box together um, mm-hmm. that you just kind of, you know. So I think there's lots of ways to do something. Lots of ways to do it. And, yeah, and you certainly don't need to reinvent the wheel. You know, that's not what we're saying. Some of these things are standard, like the candle. Totally. You know, but you can put your own importance on it and your own twist on it. It and you know that is perfectly fine and you don't have to do any of it if you don't want to yeah and you don't have to do any of those things it's Mm-mm. just kind of things that sometimes people like to do you sure know? but you yeah. don't have to do you don't have to you, you definitely don't. don't have to nope don't feel like you're forced to do hand fasting because game of thrones told you you do i also <laughs> think about and i just thought about this right now what do you think about a silent ceremony oh my goodness like describe L- like you're there uh-huh. and you're like looking and you're doing but nobody's talking <gasps> the whole time the whole time oh my goodness wouldn't that be amazing that'd be amazing how do you but how do you like declare like would you write it i think you could write things you could exchange it with your partner and you guys could read them and respond to them like emotionally but not with words wow that would be intense i feel like i would cry i don't know i know i feel like i would throw up i know <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I don't know. I literally just thought of this right now. And I'm like, wow, I think that could work. That could be super powerful. That would be so like, um, I don't know. It reminds me of like monks, like, you know, the vow of silence and just sort of like, it's amazing, like the intention and everything that goes into everything that they do. And probably witnessing that is crazy yeah like you wouldn't even really know what to think about it I know I'd be afraid to make a sound if anyone out there does that please let us know let us know that sounds amazing (laughs) or if someone else already did it and they're like yeah we already did that like I didn't yeah. have an original idea. That's fine. We don't need to. It's no big deal. It's okay. We didn't say we did. We're dumb witches. Yeah. No, that's for sure. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> okay. 
Oh, let's get away from the silent wedding concept. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, what else? What else? What else do you have? So, um, something else I have that's sort of like a thing but hidden in plain sight mm. type of deal that I thought of is you can set up decor and elements that are part of your wedding in an intentional way and no one else would know that you were doing this. Like you could have elements related to the four corners and know, oh. know you know, where they were on the date and then set up things according to that on tables that. or on mm-hmm. the ground or however you're doing stuff. Um, you could have like crystal grids like set up. That's amazing. And like people would just see it as part of the decor and that would be amazing. And maybe people who were inclined, you could kind of explain it to them and be like, well, this is why I did this this way. Mm -hmm. But that could be very cool. And it's really contributing to the energy, you know, on the day. But it's just something that's just, it looks aesthetic. Yes. Yes. No, I love that. I love that. That sounds really pretty. (laughs) It does. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it would have like a natural aesthetic to it because it corresponds you know, the way that naturally it fits. So. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I also just want to touch back on just quickly, like mm-hmm. the words that you exchange as part of the ritual or part of the ceremony. Right. There's kind of the traditional words like, do you take this to be your law, you know, whatever, yeah, sure. uh-huh. which is great and fine. And like, that's meaningful and that's emotional or it can be, you know, yeah. if you're, if you mean it when you're saying it. Totally. Right. Um, but a lot of people now, not just witches, um, write and say their own vows. Yes. And I think that's obviously really personal and it's a place where you can incorporate any things that you want to incorporate and say. 100%. So beautiful and amazing. I mean, that is doing a spell right there. It really is. Mm Mm-hmm. Putting a spell on your partner. Yes, it is. <laughs> so, you already did, and now you're... And now you're doing it officially. <laughs> yes. I love that. I love that. And, like, back to also, like, involving people in it, right? And, like, mm-hmm. having... People are involved in that, too. And I think they're... Obviously, they're witnessing that, and they're sort of, like, co-signing on what you're saying, and that's um, being involved in that spell work. But I think there's, like, intentional ways you can do that with your um, audience, no. Yeah, Fam- right? uh, fi- uh, friends, and, friends family. and family. I'm like, it's kind of an audience. Cause well, it's kind of an audience at the time they're sitting down and watching. They're something. watching you, right? Yeah. But yeah, like, um, there's some things you could do to involve them even more. Like, um, you could have an idea I thought of is you could have them write sort of like a wish for you mm. or a word or just whatever they wanted to write for you. You could do that on like bay leaves or something like that and then collect them and then maybe you could make a simmer pot out of that later totally i love that or hand them something like maybe like a crystal or something and then they sort of put their intention in it however Mm -hmm. they see fit to do that and then you collect it at the end and then you have all of that good energy from people to you yeah see and i love that too because again taking from sort of like the non-witchy or traditional weddings. Yeah. Like, I've oh, I've seen a lot of people at the receptions, they have cards, like, advice yes, for the newlyweds yes, exactly. or something. Like, it's kind of that same concept. Yeah, it except is. Except you could take that and incorporate it into a spell or into something magical, yes. um, you know, for yourself and not just... I mean, it's kind of just magical to have everyone's advice for you anyways. That is you know? kind of magical, too. Cool. I love that. And if you're open to that, I think that's really cool. If you, like, know what you're dealing with in this situation and you really don't want that advice and you don't want to hear anything well, from Well, it doesn't people, have to be advice, <laughs> I guess. It could be. Then you can. Well wishes. Yeah, you can say just that. Yeah. <laughs> and then, true. you know, you could burn them if you wanted to. Yeah, maybe especially you if you to. don't like what they said. <laughs> totally. You could burn those ones and then you could keep the other ones. See? To hell with them. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like this is an important thing to touch on, too, because, you know, we're like, oh, and so nice, and, like, people, probably because that's, like, the experiences we've had. Yeah. Um, But, you know, that's not always. So just remember that magic exists for the other purpose, too, and if you really do not like what is being brought there, or you have no control over it, maybe, Mm -hmm. um, or something happens Mm -hmm. that you had no control over or whatever, you are doing magic. So just keep that in mind. Yeah. No, that is actually a very good point because sometimes you have, look, we all hope that you can have like the dream of just having exactly what you want and only who you want there and only the most loving, supportive people. It's not always the case. No. Sometimes you have to invite people and sometimes, I don't know why, but people have to be shitty. They just do. (laughs) They, They do. Yeah. I don't know. Even like, 
just, yeah, I don't know. Just yeah. people, yeah. you know, people are people. But you can, with your magic, with your intentions, with your spell work, you mm-hmm. can protect yourself. Totally. And you can um, reject that. You influence. can. Yes. And you can set that up. I mean, we talked a lot about, like, you know, setting up the space um, for the ceremony and, like, maybe having mm-hmm. your efficient do that and stuff. Mm-hmm. But if you know, like, okay, d- you can clue them in. Like, the- these are the things yes. I I need these people especially to sort of be, like, surrounded Yes. With like an Put anti- a lot of salt around my aunt. <laughs> <Jeez>. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Do some real work in this area. Well, and again, like as the, you know, bride or groom or whatever I you know. are um, being, then you can also put a crystal in your dress, in your bra, in your pocket yes. for yourself. Mm-hmm. You can wear jewelry with intention that has totally. um, protection or crystals, or you can just bless mm-hmm. all of your jewelry, um, yeah. you know, before you uh, put it on. Yeah. And I think also, like, if you choose to do, like, a veil concept, oh, yeah. like, that's very protective and insulating as it well. It is. So. It's so true. Even yeah. if you're not wearing it over your face, there's still totally. something about it. You're, like, cloaked in protection. Absolutely. So, you know, and I don't know. I mean, a simple wedding, of course, is beautiful. Yes. But also, like, when do you have a chance to wear like a fucking 10 foot veil like do it whatever you're doing if you've never worn a dress and you want to wear a dress wear a dress if you have always worn a dress and you don't want to wear a dress don't wear a dress I don't care what you do wear angel wings wear armor like recreate yes. Baz Luhrmann's Romeo and Juliet. If you do, I need to be invited to that because that or is like Or at least amazing. we need to see pictures. Yes. <laughs> I know. I'm like, invite me to that. Okay. They're like, okay. okay. No, but We seriously. like your podcast, but. Yeah, but we're not inviting you to our wedding. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> we have such good ideas. Just send us pictures. But um, that would be amazing if you want to do that or have two Leos or two Claire Danes. Yeah. Or 100%. three. I don't know what you guys are doing. Do it all. I I'm down for all of it. I love all of it, but whatever yes. you're doing, do I mean, it all the way. Of course the Leo is going to point that out. Of course the Leo is going to be like, <laughs> you're the queen of the day. Yes, you are the dark queen. You are the snow queen. You are the fairy queen. Dude, you are whatever you want to be. Snow queen? Okay, yes. a snow queen theme wedding? Have to see that too. Need Hello. to see that too. That's amazing. Yeah. Narnia? What? Okay, I'm just going off. Yes. But I love that we like started on such a sweet loving beautiful note and and don't be a bridezilla and it's not about that and now we're like (laughs) be a bridezilla get it and wear a red dress and like 10 foot like okay (laughs) they're like yeah you're okay (laughs) not doing that As a don't. It's amazing. I just... It's, it's amazing. I hope it's amazing. It is. And I'm glad we talked about this because what? I think, you know, it's a thing that comes along in many of our lives. Or maybe you're not the one getting married, but your friend is. Yeah. And so you want to, like, help and support them or, yes. you know, maybe give them ideas. Even if they are or aren't a witch, like, there's cool ideas that you can do and be unique and have fun. So. Absolutely. Yeah. It's all about you or them or whoever. And we love all of it. And you're all amazing. Amazing, and you all deserve to be married if you want to be married and to have an amazing person that treats you right. A hundred percent. That's because love is very important in this world. Mm-hmm. So that's all we have. Yay. Yay okay. Cute. I love that. My big witch energy is full of love. Same. Yay. Now I want a 10 foot veil. <sighs> you can borrow mine. Okay. Good. <laughs> Perfect. Now we're doing a spell of the week. We are. Well, you are. Well, I am. I'm paying okay. attention to it. So <laughs> this spell of the week is called Right Path Card Reading. Ooh. Okay, so I recommend, and I'm going to do this. Oh, I love I'm it. I'm not just going to describe it. I'm going to do it okay. so, you know, you can see it. I do recommend using an actual tarot deck for okay. this um, simply because I love oracle decks. We have a ton of them. Um, a lot of them don't have a lot of cards in them. True. And tarot has a lot of cards, and I think that that lends itself better to this. Okay. Um, Also, this is just, you know, sort of my opinion, but I think oracle decks can be sometimes too positive. Yeah, you're totally right. Because they can kind of be 
affirmations or take the form of something like that. Totally. Which I love and I need and I want, but tarot's not like that. (laughs) It's not not at all like that. It is neutral, Mm -hmm. meaning that you will have cards that have positive and negative symbology that can be interpreted in positive and negative ways. Right. All, each and every card. So highly recommend using a tarot deck for this um, if you have one. So all you're going to do, and I'm going to be doing this. Mm-hmm. So it's just um, just a card spread. But you're going to say, and this is sort of in honor of like the new calendar year mm-hmm. and sort of like, you know. So you're going to say, signs to know, signs to see, new path signs send to me. And this is setting your intention with this spell. And then you're going to pull six cards, one for each month, starting January and you're just going to lay them. Oh, see, I did my shuffle. These aren't supposed to be upside down, so I'm gonna flip them back. Okay. I'm gonna lay them kind of like in a little rainbow. And then you're just gonna look at them. And you're going to take a note. Mm-hmm. And I tried to flip these back, but. So then you're just going to have January, February, March, April, May, June, and whatever the card is, you can make, write these down. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of just to give you guidance for each month. So for example, here I have six of cups, king of wands, two of swords, four of swords, two of cups, and temperance. Interesting. So... I'm not going to go into interpreting all of this right now because I just don't have time. But you want to look up the meanings of all of these. Right. You want to write them down starting now in January. Mm -hmm. You want, I would recommend that you journal a little paragraph about what each of these means. Yeah. And then as each month um, comes to a close and the next month starts, you just revisit what you wrote. Mm Mm-hmm. See how you're feeling about it again. Look at it all again. And by the time you get to the sixth month, you'll have all this good information. That's very cool. Yeah. And I really like that you do it kind of in advance. And then if you take note, and I'm even imagining like if I'm doing this for myself, taking note of each one in my planner. Yes. And then as I'm going, because sometimes like you get a little preview of what's going to come for the months, you know, But it maybe isn't specifically to you, like your horoscope or something. And then as you go through, you start picking up on more things or learning more things or you start listening to our why those. And then you're like, oh, that's happening too or whatever. And you get more information. And then this will make more sense as you're coming to it and then after it. Exactly. Because once you're here, like in April, Mm -hmm. you can look back on the January and then you can maybe see, oh, now I see what that was really meaning Mm -hmm. and whatever you wrote about it at the time, you Mm -hmm. know? So, and then even looking forward like this, I know this is coming. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. So this is the spell of the week. I love it. So do it. Gorgeous. Signs to know, signs to see. Mm-hmm. New path signs sent to me. Because we're Beautiful. all on a new path because it's a new year. And, you know, it's a new calendar year. But it is. It's important. It's something. So, yes, it's, it's part of the, the little shifts and little organization things to kind of like be intentional about our energy for the year. This is like another really cool, easy way to do that. And yes. not a lot of pressure because you're just setting the stage and then you can kind of interact with the stage as it goes exactly and then you can obviously do this again in june or actually in july for the next six months if you wanted to Ah. so cool (sighs) all right spell of the week all done for that i love it you're welcome beautiful you're welcome everybody (laughs) will you marry me um yes perfect duh (laughs) we did the whole episode just like it's it (laughs) They're like, wait, really? Yeah. We're already married, stupid. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Do not wait. But yes, I'd marry you all over again. Anytime. I love that. Thanks. (laughs) Uh, I think that about does it for this episode. Mm -hmm. So until next time. Stay witchy, friends. And stay dumb.